This beautiful building is the city of Mabgate Inn, dating from the 1850s. It sits near the southern end of Mabgate, a road and inner city area of Leeds. The exterior is tiled in green faience, a material closely linked to the heritage of the city. More of that later. But what about the name? Is there or was there a city of Mabgate? Mabgate is located roughly northeast of the city centre. During the 16th and 17th centuries, as Leeds experienced a rapid growth, largely due to the textile and twine industry, Mabgate began to be populated by small businesses and workshops. By the 17th century, Mabgate was an established route into the city from the east, but it was an area with a poor reputation. This may be reflected in its name, as Mabs were prostitutes, plying their trade in the street or gate. By the 1800s, Leeds had become one of the major northern towns, producing and trading in woolen cloth and a variety of machinery. Mabgate connected Quarry Hill with Skinner Lane, and around it development quickly expanded, so that it became one of Leeds' major industrial areas. The presence of Mabgate Beck, also known as Lady Beck, had attracted industrial entrepreneurs to Mabgate in the late 18th century. Mills, largely associated with the woollen industry, appeared along the edges of the watercourse. The Beck was a useful source of power, but also provided a drain for waste products. In 1791, Mabgate Mills was opened at the northern end of Mabgate by Samuel Blackborough and Joseph and John Holroyd, initially as a cotton mill. It now comprises buildings of various phases around a courtyard. The building facing onto Mabgate is impressive, standing five storeys high with a continuous and repetitive bay frontage. This elevation is almost cliff-like in its position in relation to the street. Although close to Mabgate Beck, early maps indicate the mill used the small tributary of the Beck, which ran in from nearer to Primrose Hill to drive its water wheel. But was Mabgate ever a city? The answer, in a nutshell, is no. So why the name? Well, one suggestion is that the inn, which was built in the late 1840s or early 1850s, was at the city end of Mabgate, i.e. nearer to the growing Leeds town centre, and its name developed from there. In 1854, the pub was listed as the City Inn in the Leeds Intelligencer, but by 1857 it was called the City of Mabgate Inn in the Leeds Times. It might be the name just developed, or it could have been a cunning ploy to draw attention. The old pub has now been converted to residential use, but it still bears its fine example of Bermontoff's faience in the locally produced green glazed tiling around its exterior. The heyday of Bermontoff's tiles and pottery production in Leeds was between 1880 and 1904, and so it is likely the tiles were added around then. It was also at that time that the name Bermontoff's became known as a brand rather than just a location in Leeds. The business had begun when fire clay was discovered in a coal mine owned by William Wilcock and John Lassie. After a period of expansion, the firm made decorative bricks and architectural terracotta, glazed bricks and glazed terracotta that was shipped around the world. There are other celebrated examples within Leeds. Opposite the inn is the graveyard of St Mary's Church of Mabgate, sometimes referred to as St Mary's Quarry Hill. The church has now gone, but it was one of Leeds' million churches in which Parliament provided funds for the building of new churches in areas which had become densely populated and could no longer be ministered to by existing churches. It was designed by Thomas Taylor and took three years to build. Consecration took place in October 1826, 
The cost was £12,500. The stone for construction came from Bramley and Horsforth. It was demolished in 1979, but the churchyard remains as a rare open green space, with some gravestones still evident. Leeds suffered badly from cholera epidemics in the 1800s, and St Mary's graveyard was used extensively for the burial of victims. The first large-scale cholera epidemic in Leeds began in 1832 and claimed some 700 lives. During Victorian times it was said to have been targeted by body snatchers who would steal fresh corpses to sell to medical men for use in dissections. Burials stopped in the mid-1800s when a new cemetery opened at Bermontoff's but many victims of the earlier cholera epidemics were interred here. Towards the middle of Mabgate, Hope Foundry and Hope House are together Grade 2 listed, recognising their special interest. Originally established in 1812 by Samuel Lawson as a blacksmith and maker of flax spinning machinery, Hope Foundry emerged making machinery for the textile and twine industry and would eventually extend on both sides of the road. This aerial photograph from 1930 shows the extent of the foundry site. Mabgate Mills is in the top left hand corner of the picture. The road Mabgate runs in front of it. To the right of the photo, on both sides of Mabgate, is a section of the foundry which continues off the picture to the right. The entrance to the Hope Foundry is a grand statement which continues to impress. The left bay projects slightly. A similar bay to the right of the foundry entrance was demolished in the early 1960s. The left bay is incorporated into the 1910 Hope House, which extends around the corner with Hope Road. For the past 10 years, the buildings have been home to MAP Charities Alternative Education Programme, who work with young people who can't access the mainstream education system. Their exciting plans to refurbish Hope Foundry and transform the heritage building into a thriving place of education, creativity and enterprise is well underway. Do take the opportunity to look them up. There are some amazing things going on, including Cosmic Slop, a regular in-house fundraising event which plays host to local and internationally acclaimed DJs, playing records through a unique custom-built sound system. 100% of funds raised go directly towards supporting the education project. Housing for the workforce of the foundry and surrounding mills and businesses was initially provided in rows of cottages within folds, occupying land on former farmyards. This example was called Tunstall's Fold. The photograph was taken around 1901. During the 19th and early 20th century, extensive areas of terraced housing also developed in the nearby Leylands and Newtown, as well as Quarry Hill and beyond. Serving the thirsty workers were local public houses such as the City of Mabgate Inn and the Black Horse seen here. The site was originally Mabgate Hall, built in 1673, but it became the Black Bull Inn. The building was rebuilt in 1868 and became the Black Horse. Sadly, it has also succumbed to social change and it is now converted to flats. As the Beck followed its course from the edges of North Leeds to the air during the industrial period, it provided water to industries such as shoe works and tanneries at Sheepscar. It was also where dirty water and sewage were returned, so by the time it reached Mabgate it was filthy, and from time to time it was responsible for outbreaks of cholera and typhoid. The council's solution to the insanitary issues of the becks in Leeds was to cover them over. Here you can see the beck being covered over in front of the city of Mabgate Inn, the covering of the becks began in the early 1900s. By this time the channel of the beck had already been replaced with cobbles and concrete so that it flowed quickly 
as it passed through the edge of the city centre. Here the Beck will see the light of day for the last time until it reaches the air opposite the Royal Armouries. The story of the Beck is covered in another video available on this channel. At the southern end of Mabgate once stood the New York Road Circus. This 1937 view of the junction from New York Road shows York Road at the other side of the large roundabout or circus, following the route of the old Quarry Hill Road, which also heads away from the roundabout to the right. Regent Street and Mabgate are to the left. The church behind is St Mary's. To the right, Quarry Hill Flats are being constructed. Today, the A64M Inner Ring Road occupies the site and the southern point of what used to be Mabgate, although the Yorkshire Penny Bank is still located on the left. Sadly, it is in a poor state of affairs, and like many of the buildings on the eastern side of Regent Street, it is under threat of demolition and redevelopment. However, a recent conservation area designation may help retain the buildings and their heritage. People are working hard in Mabgate to retain the interesting mix of buildings and breathe new life into the area with significant success. Pedestrianisation and one-way routing have already had a positive impact. Leith City College has taken over a significant part of what was once the foundry. There are numerous small businesses and artisans working in Mabgate Mills, Hope Foundry and along the street. People have moved back too, and the number of residents has increased. Several key pieces of street art help to brighten the once gloomy thoroughfare and make the overall appearance much more welcoming. Mabgate looks to be a place on the up, and it is well worth a wander if you are in the area. I do hope you have enjoyed this slice of Leeds local history. There are many more on the Geography Juice channel. Thank you for watching.